So, can we start? Yes. Ah, great. Well, um, thanks everyone for coming. I'm rather really happy that we have the opportunity to have a second buff workshop meeting. The sound, the sound is not working. Have I turned it off? No. Okay. Yeah, I think most of you have been in the first buff on this topic, on the team package maintenance. So I won't have to spend much time for starting and introducing <coughs> myself. I'm still Gregor for those of <laughs> who don't know me. Um, yeah, I've been thinking a, a bit yesterday what we can, can to do today. And my ideas were that I'd like to, well, continue working on the ideas we've collected. We found several issues um, on Thursday that might be interesting to look <coughs> into more deeply. And maybe we can, uh, yeah, manage to come up with some concrete, detailed proposals, at least for one or, or two of them. We don't have too much time. And I'd also like to have some kind of of roadmap or time structure, whatever, to see how we can <coughs> can move on with these issues. By the way, Tim has agreed again to take some, some notes. They were perfect the last time, so thanks a lot. So we will have a, a nice protocol of nice minutes again from this session. Okay. Um, what can we talk about? I'd first like to, uh, well, pose a, a, a meta, meta question um, to all of you about what are the best communication channels for this kind of meta discussion around teams. So, which I don't know, mailing lists, IRC C channels, whatever should we use after we leave Madre Plata tomorrow? Then we have several topics where we can choose from and at the end I'd like to, as I've said before, come up with some um, assignments to look who is go gonna do what. Is that okay? Okay, so the first first topic, um, um, I've posted the, the minutes of the last uh, meeting to the, the DEPCONF discuss mailing list because we are at DEPCONF and, and the minutes related to a meeting at DEPCONF. But in general, what, what do you think would be appropriate places for, for uh, sending minutes or for, for putting documentation, like this collection of tools we've been talking about? Well, I, th I think for results, this this might work, but for 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 work in progress, for putting proposals. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and is the mailing list, do you think, would be appropriate for discussing these issues? Is this a QA issue or is this something else? Do well. Okay. Right. When you have a mailing list, you can go and search the documentation by yourself because you, you can read, uh, you can take your time to read the mailing list and search. That's, uh, for, that's why I uh, prefer mailing lists uh, from other uh, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. and gather people for one <coughs> hour and, and make a meeting with a, a fixed agenda and minutes of the meeting. I noticed that the Debian Edu people say, well, if there's nobody who volunteers to write the minutes, we make, don't make any meeting. So this, I, I don't know how strict you should do it, but this is a kind of an effective way to mm -hmm. uh, use IRC instead of just chatting there. Yeah. So I would like to include this. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, IRC is very useful when you are uh, with a few time to have, for example, a release or a freeze of the system. Or for example, that happens to the local, local team. In the last two weeks, IRC was the best thing because it was yeah. uh, as fast as we need uh, to do some things that needed to be done very fast. And I guess with software, it could happen the same way. Without mic? Oh. Yeah, no, no, we have the microphone. Yeah, just yeah. a few. create uh, usable minutes or usable uh, colleague proceedings, if you wish, is uh, uh, the IRC format is very good for following a conversation, but it's not a good format for uh, documenting, not a good format for uh, transmitting, uh, be because it's uh, not ordered and it's full of uh, well, not, not important expressions. So in the end, we always ha have the role of a human uh, rewriting what was uh, said. Uh, uh, it's a relator. Okay, so to, to sum it up, that was, that was just the introductory meta question of me. We can use the Debian Dwell mailing list as it should be of general interest. We can use the wiki for uh, work in progress. And if we come up with something stable, we should aim to get it into the developer's reference. That's okay? Okay. So, uh, back one slide. These were more or less the four broad issues we had last time. Uh, I, I have one slide for, for each of them with the, the main results from, from Thursday. Yeah, which one would you like to start with? Ah, okay. That's fine to uh -huh. Okay, thanks. Uh -huh. Tim suggests maintainers and uploaders? Yeah, that was easy. So that's nice and quick. Hopefully. Um, shall I talk? Oh, I've got the slide. Great. Um, I'm going to stop typing for a moment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I had a thought about this um, the other day, just after the meeting, and that's that um, 
I think it would be better to standardize having the mailing list in the maintainers field um, because the bug reports will automatically go to the uh, to the whole group and not just to the core maintainer. <coughs> Well, actually, as soon as Luca changed the belief to the guy who got the list, then you can do that as well. Okay. <laughs> uh, one problem with the mailing list with the maintainer field is actually that uh, the mailing list scenarios are configured in tons of different ways, and most of the time we get moderated, and Up. this can be really annoying. So, yeah, it's a, tec it's a technical problem, but it is annoying. Yeah, yeah some, someone should talk to the iOS admins about that to have a, a common configuration, I think, for a mailing list. That would make sense. For example, we could allow signed mails without where well, maybe mail doesn't allow that. But actually, I'm not sure that uh, mailing list in, uh, in Montana would be good, but the last time we tried to do that on Debian Devel, maybe two years ago, something like that, there was no consensus about it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the whole issue of receiving mail about stuff in Debian is a mess, because you get sometimes things three times, because you, you are the maintainer of the package, and you subscribe on it for, for it yeah. on the PTS, because you want to care about something that is not provided elsewhere, and then you well, and, and then you, uh, you get them through the mailing list of your team, so you get them three times. I get the testing migration email three times <coughs> each time. Well, so maybe, well, that's lo really long term and hard to solve, but someone should, well, it's nice to have it in the notes, actually, at least. <laughs> it's a mess and that should be fixed at some point in the long term future. <laughs> For DevConf 12 or... <laughs> 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 so okay, if if and yeah, if the the group is in the uploaders field, then the it must be assured that the bug reports also go to the uploaders field. Otherwise, it's rather difficult. Yeah, I think that the only team that has um, uh, main responsible person, maintainer, and team in uploaders thing is the Ruby team. Mm -hmm. And what we do is that we subscribe the mailing list to the PTS. So we get the big okay. reports. Yeah, but the more general question is in the in the first line, uh, someone I don't remember who it was, I think Zach, said it would be good to standardize on these definitions, what should be in, in the maintainer field and what should be in the uploaders field for group maintained packages. <coughs> so um, yes, do we want it? And if yes, how could this standard really look like? But we could standardize on the two different ways to do that. One way <laughs> is maintainer <laughs> is uh, maintainer is mailing list, uploaders is active people in the teams working on the package, and the other way is main responsible person in the uploaders team plus <coughs> other responsible person in the team uh, in, up, uh, in uploaders. I think. Well, well, you got my point. Mm. Why? <laughs> because in the past, in the Ruby team, we had uh, maintainer set to the team, and we are not. Uh, yeah, I think we, that we was the second there. line. What is that? Yeah. And uh, w what happened is that uh, nobody cared about some package, and that was really annoying. So at least if you have one person that is supposed to feel responsible, then.
Yeah, yeah, that's what I've been talking about before. If the group is in the uploaders, then uploaders must receive emails. Or as Lucas said, that the Ruby team does is there is. Yeah. They generate to the last two persons. Well, if, if well, that's the cha that's the change of that. I mean, I think the point of maintainer is uh, the contact point for the users, because if you want to blame or praise, okay, let's be <laughs> yes, two possible ways, you always have the change of. Also, one, one of the things that uh, we have uh, seen in the Perl group is that, well, fortunately, it's not very often, but uh, when somebody leaves the group, uh, he doesn't have to orphan his packages. Uh, he will still be listed, and if he wants to be delisted, well, somebody, so, somebody else will have to take them, of course. But uh, it's, uh, I mean, I know it's just a psychological difference, but for me, touching any package in the Perl group makes me add myself as an uploader and then <coughs> become responsible for it. While as a, if it were taking maintainership, it's a bit more of a, mm -hmm. I mean, because it's not that I am the main maintainer for it. For example, this package I just took in the Ruby group. Well, I took it because it was uh, basically orphan, but not uh, because I use it. <laughs> I think Frederick was the next one. It was almost to say the same, is that uh, in the case of the first option, you have the names of the responsible persons in the uploaders field. So I don't see the problem at all. I, I mean, uh, well, oh, will you know which one is uh, to blame if it doesn't take care of this package? All of them are. Of them. Yeah. Of them. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes I'd like to make a change to all packages in the Ruby team without fi having to feel responsible about the, uh, all those packages uh, for six months or. <laughs> Well, the other problem uh, is... Or who should uh, take a look at bugs? But in the end, if we are group maintaining, the bugs should be responsibility of everybody. Yeah. So. Well, the other problem is, uh, will we manage to standardize on maintainer is a, is a team? Because we are, okay, yeah. here, maybe, okay, I, I, could, I could change it for the Ruby team. I don't, I'm not really strongly opposed to that, especially if we switch to the GNOME thing with where you automatically get uh, active people <coughs> in uploaders. But that doesn't mean that everybody will agree in Debian. <laughs> and that will be really hard, I think, to push because there are many different cases. And currently, w w which teams are represented actually here? That's Ruby Express? Or Camel? Or Camel? So you are in, in the group of uh, group group maintainer groups. <laughs> well, we can try, but does it doesn't mean that we'll manage to standardize on that. No, try. sure, but if, if we say we do it this, this way and give an example and make this available for other groups as a model of good practice, But then yeah. what we should really uh, have easily available is the GNOME thing that automatically yeah. extracts from the change log and edits the upload us. Isn't that the question? Where do we put something like that? Should we create a, a package for tools for, or that scripts? Or mm, that's yeah, that's that scripts. I don't think so. I think that's in the next. Uh, uh, on, well, on, the on the next on the next slide. <laughs> and, but 
before we actually s switch to that, uh, so something like the what the GNOME team does, this uh, automatically generating uploaders, is this something we all think is reasonable and we want to try out? So I, I'm not sure that everybody will agree on using it. I actually don't think there's the need that everybody agrees on it. But for one, for the people who want to do something like that, mm -hmm. it should be available and easy to use. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, sounds sounds reasonable too for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, and and thanks for the keyword for the transition to the to the next slide. Uh, yeah, we've been talking about tools, about the question that you've raised again now. Sh do we need a package for common tools? Or should we put them in an existing package after we have collected them, which is the, <laughs> the task before, or after we have written them? There was also the question about tools for, mm -hmm. for changing all packages in a team. So what are the opinions on this issue? Dev scripts for that because dev scripts has tons of dependencies, many many per lips, I think. So they are recommend. They recommend. Well, so that would work. But still, I think dev script is quite big. And I'm not sure, but it, it, this package will be used as a build dependencies for, for for many packages. So it's important to have something that is easily easy to install. Actually, it's solid size is a one megabyte. Yeah, that's Depends, big. Uh, well, one megabyte and a half is big. If, <laughs> if you want to just just want to store a few CDBS rules, or well, you are assuming that the tool is to be used during build. Why should you use it while creating the script package? Or because it will still be oh, yeah, it will be it will be in build depends in depth. That's true. That's in build depends. Well, we're using GCH to, to play with the changes, but we will use the yeah. build time. I th think there are, there are two possibilities. The, the one mm -hmm. is the is having scripts you use for, for manipulating the package, manually, automatic, whatever, but then you don't have it as a build dependency or to have it have some magic going on automatic so during the build. I think I think that they just uh, said dash i in the yeah, control the file. Hmm? When is it done? I think it's at build time in a, in a CDBS rule, but I'm not sure now. So if you have just this tool, is is not worth to yeah, to have sure. a package. The question is, uh, do we have actually any other tools used for team maintenance that we want to identify in a, with a package? Well, uh, I think there might be some some tools. I mean, I only know the Perl group, and we, we have some. I don't know four or five shell scripts that, of, of course, everyone can write in half an hour, but still. It if we collect them, they might be useful for others, and I guess other teams have such stuff too, and this, well, could be collected and could be maybe merged together, and, and well, there have been ways to have it in a package, so maybe we should put it in, into a package. It is not allowed. We are webs. Okay. It is not allowed. We, in, for example, we have uh, we are used to use it in the Camel group, and then we switched off of it. There is just one package remaining, which actually needs it because the architecture are dynamically computed, 
and that is done before creating the source package. What the release team was complaining about that because it breaks in some weird ways. LC bug. Well, another tool which we need and we have discussed in the first part of the bot is something to do actions in batch mode in several packages. Mm -hmm. And this is a good candidate to be put in, yeah, in such a package it. actually. It's something which will need like awareness of various possible subversion layouts and do stuff in all of the packages. Well, I, I think we should do an well, at the beginning, probably we will just have the subversion specific, but I will really hope to extend to other VCS. So it's probably worth to keep in a separate package. It, it doesn't really fit in this topic, but uh, we have to <laughs> remember whenever we do uh, repository wide uh, changes with such tools, well, those are known to kill Alios as a whole. So, uh, it, it was you who did it or Tincho? who did a mass, uh, well, a series of, of uh, commits which triggered a series of post-commit hooks which killed Elliot. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I first make the changes and then I do just one commit. I don't know why it was like that. But and it, it was a problem in the, in the post-commit <laughs> hook. Okay, so uh, we have some, some ideas about which scripts could be there. Uh, have we decided if the if this should be a don't know a dev script for Teams package or if this should be a build dependency yet? Well, actually, probably the best idea is to add stuff to dev scripts and have a separate binary package. And to have a separate binary packages. Ah, okay. That's probably the best idea. Mhm. Mm and that's called. Dev, dev scripts, teams, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. Dev script is quite open to contribution, so it, mm -hmm. it won't yeah. really be a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are adding a lot of fancy stuff. Okay. Uh, is this all about tools we have to discuss now? Well. Yeah, <laughs> and we suck. <laughs> 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 Completely. <laughs> well, the wrapper is written in Ruby, so it's an improvement compared to using it. Uh -huh. I think what, what also belongs to this <coughs> topic is this, this whole web application stuff. Maybe we can spend a few minutes um, on that. There are quite a few things out there. So on one end, the other day I thought about including stuff like pet in such a package, but on the other end it would be better to have it installed in a central place on Alios and just have one yeah, code it base. Yeah, it doesn't help on the desktop machine. It I have no idea if there are other web-based tools which would make sense to have in the package. Yeah, the, the <coughs> there are for sure some some things in the Debian Science and, and MIT uh, community, which might be worth merging. Yeah, and we've been, been also talking about DDPO yesterday at the bar, and there's this whole issue with, uh, how is it called, DEHS, this watch file stuff, which is a bit separate too. I don't know if there's some, some decision yet on that. Well, the thing is, uh, all of those tools, um, well, it, it will depend on how UDD works out. If UDD becomes the standard place to get such information about packages, then writing tools like DDPO uh, will be really easy. And I think that one milestone that we should uh, target for UDD, for, use for those who work on UDD, is be able to do DDPO just in just one SQL query. 
and mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be quite well or just in a few SQL queries and have all the information in UDD and mm -hmm. that's not we are not quite far from that actually it's quite mm -hmm. we, we might reach that in a few weeks mm -hmm. so then at this point uh, writing something like DDPO uh, rewriting DDPO from scratch would be really easy <coughs> it's only a matter of presenting data and that's quite well. yeah, About well, what? I think I think I think we solved all of the print performance problem in UDD now. It works quite well. The last queries I made were all working instantaneously. Unlucky with my queries. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're better optimized. <laughs> uh, UDD is currently running on a uh, DOMU in a not so f not so fast DOMU with not much RAM. Uh, moving it to another machine would really help. If you can get uh, 4 gigabyte uh, RAM on this machine, that would be much faster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I have to admit that I actually like the idea of, of having essential storage. We were also talking uh, yesterday about, about adding the information from the version control systems to uh, UDD because that, that's what PET uses heavily relies on and if that simp simply works then have it all in one database and produce different outputs seems like a better idea than storing data here and there and everywhere and <coughs> twice and stuff yeah well the real point is determining uh, what are the current tools in use by all the teams so we need a list yeah the list of features that each tool does and then we can see how we can uh, get all of those mm -hmm. features into UDD. Mm -hmm. For example, if, if you only use the changelog, for example, in of if the only file from the VCS that you use is a changelog, it's easy to import changelog into UDD and then c do some uh, funny stuff with comparing version from the changelog in the VCS with the version in the archive. That's not really hard to do. Mm -hmm. and someone just have to write the script. Mm. Mm -hmm. And and you are the contact person for for UDD at the moment. UDD, well, you can contact uh, Debian QA in general, I think. Okay. Good. <coughs> okay. Anything else on the tools? Except that I like to remind you to send pointers to me. Those who have not done yet. Questions: uh, do, uh, Does anybody know about Tinshows use can ng and uh, uh, plan to write the watch file format or what, whatever? And comparing its results with what DPKG does, and it found bugs in Tinshows code because apparently Tinshows reports it from policy. And uh, while there are several implementations of uh, version comparison, of Debian versions comparison, that all are basically the same code, just translated from uh, C to Python, Perl, Ruby, uh, and wait, yeah, that's all. But so there was already a Perl implementation that works in the BTS and it didn't use it. And that, I think, it's just because it didn't talk to people before writing PET. NG is totally counterproductive because it could just replace your scan. Your scan is not really nice code and it could, it could replace, replace your scan. And it doesn't need to be called your scan NG uh, and to be packaged yeah. separately. Yeah. That's wrong. <coughs> okay, so are we finished with tools? Good. Actually, we are missing just a uh, roadmap. So who does the uh, what? Like, should we start assembling tools from different places and submit them as bug reports against dev scripts or, or what? Uh, well, what, what I s still can offer is to, to do a first, first compilation of existing tools. Yeah, existing tools both web, web stuff and yeah, uh, yeah, right. local tools, uh -huh. local scripts used by teams. Yeah. And I'd, I'd Can we just send 
a mail to um, DDA about the report of this meeting and then ask people to send you short reports. Oh, maybe you could ask why not? I'm not sure that Steve asked about that in his team summary. Team no, no, I don't think so. Yeah, so send a mail to DDA with uh, <coughs> a report from these boards, from these boards, and then uh, ask people to send you a short report about each team and what specific tools they use. That's how they do mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So you have a global picture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And after that, still, I, th I suggest to use Debian QA to discuss uh, the further actions. Actually. <laughs> That generate that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm even subscribed. <laughs> we don't have poison with people there. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. And then we had this uh, point about um, documenting the workflows of, of different tools. Where there were the, the proposals of, re of using readme source, of using the, the wiki teams pages, and also this uh, idea of the abstraction package per team that also contains some documentation about the team. Should we look at this a little further? I think it came out of the f this. It's, a b it's difficult to know how the different teams works and stuff like that. I think, uh, I mean, that's uh, just stated, and I think, uh, I mean, w we we don't have much to argue on this uh, topic. We just have to do it, and it's something that each group m uh, should do according to its rules. Yeah, but if each group does it differently, then we are where we are yeah, now. Yeah, no, but uh, well. As it stated there, I mean, we should document what what each group is doing. Uh, readme that source is only used where a uh, standard. Uh, uh, I mean, w when there are patches or strange building things, which even in a group can happen in different ways. Although we try not to have it. And uh, well, yes, ex explaining. B uh, I think both in in uh, in the group's uh, page in Aliot and in the wiki. Explaining in a human readable way, <laughs> but uh, besides that, I mean, as this is geared to, uh, towards explaining to other humans, and uh, no, I don't think there's much uh, guidelines to to agree. Of. I may be completely off, but. Mm -hmm. well, the idea about how to <coughs> how to say encourage teams that do not have yet an entry on the slash teams. Have one? Hmm. Maybe they're just not aware of the. Yeah. Well, my first so idea. Okay, this is something which should be written actually in, in developer reference or whatever. If you have a, a team developing mm -hmm. stuff or packaging stuff, please add your entry under slash teams. Yeah. Do you remember about that in your, in your yeah. media you made? Sure. And I, I was just thinking about directly contacting teams, but we don't really know which teams <laughs> and how many teams we And also there's a, a very wide definition of teams. I mean, yeah. uh, we are packaging teams. Okay, that, that's, uh, that narrows the things. But for example, I don't see anybody here from KDE. Uh, I know they are a well-known team and all, or the games team. Okay, but uh, yeah, we, we cannot... Uh, formally, every uh, every maintained package is pa is maintained by a team. <laughs> I think on the wiki, there's someone who did a kind of script to extract the maintainer, which matches some concept of team. Uh huh. Is a is linked a txt file named teams of 2007. But there is no script we use to do that. <laughs> That's interesting. Good, so, well, try to remember the others that they should use the wiki slash teams to make it easier for others to <coughs> find out how the team works. 
that's it. Okay. Two, we have something else. Well, I've also put this this non-technical <coughs> stuff about the new members. Oh, we have ten minutes left. Okay. About the new members here, I'm not sure if it's of, of general interest, but uh, I admit that I am interested in in social things. That's why I propose to spend a few minutes on it again. Uh, well, these are the, the, the things, more or less, that we have collected on, on Thursday. Is the, well, no, the, the pre-ultimate one, encourage and amps to join teams, was, was more, more an idea of, of me. Is this something that's useful or not? Or how, how can this be done? Well, there's several problems here. The first problem is get people interested into Debian development. And then, get, and then get them into teams. It's two different uh, issues. And um, I think that many people just don't realize that it could, that could contribute to, de to Debian development by joining a team and helping the team. And that was actually my case for years. I, I was a uh, user of Debian and <coughs> just couldn't see why Debian needed my help. Mm -hmm. And we really, really need to focus on sending this message that if you are interested in Debian development, you don't need to have someone, something that you want to package. You can just come, join mm -hmm. teams, and help with the existing package. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's not a message that is really well given out currently. Mm -hmm. Well, I will speak uh, uh, as a user trying to uh, become part of a, of a group. Uh, I was trying to join a group in Debian. I am trying a current country. I will not say which group, of course. Uh, but when I, I the first thing I did I was was to log in the IRC, in which uh, in the web page they say that's the best thing to do, so I did that. I asked, uh, okay, I'm new here. What in what way I can learn <coughs> and help? And they told me st uh, start closing bugs. Okay. Yes, I read the documentation in the web page, which is helpful but not a lot. It's a collection of uh, separate things that you have to mix and try to understand. And then you have to wonder, uh, this group maintains a big thing. Uh, actually, it's the KDE group, the integrity KDE group. And what do I do? I have to start wondering a lot around all those bugs for all those packages. Uh, I can understand that the people in the group are working in the bugs uh, and perhaps they're not thinking about uh, okay, uh, training someone to do it. Mm -hmm. Because when you're working, you're trying to close bags and get things done, which is what most of us try to do. But <laughs> I found qu uh, quite a, a problem to start doing it <laughs> because I don't really know exactly how to do it. Or uh, all right, well, what steps should I take? Perhaps uh, I th closed, uh, for example, my five uh, first bags, and I wasn't sure that I was, why I was really doing it Fine, I ask it in the, in the mailing list and, uh, and they say, you forgot this thing. Okay, and that's everything. But nothing that you did well, you did bad. Perhaps I'm missing some part of it. Okay. So actually, this is a bit of getting a bit of topic with uh, the team maintenance, but uh, this is exactly what are the gift tag which Lucas proposed actually. So if you're part of a team or even a single maintainer and would like to mentor someone which is new to Debian and doing stuff, you can just tag your bugs with a gift and then they will show up in the PTS. And the idea is that if you tag a bug gift, you are willing to mentor him, mentor the interested mm -hmm. guy in entering Debian. So going back to the, uh, to the relationship be between NM and teams, I think it's, really, it's a really good idea actually because usually in team, uh, it's easier to contribute smaller part mm. than with just going and triaging bug or fixing bugs or whatever. But this brings us back to how to know which teams do we have in Debian, which is really not formalized. And but if teams, if we know which teams do we have, and if teams follow the template on wikidebian.org, actually in that template there is even a list of things the team is uh, is in need of. Mm. So. In theory, newcomers can just go to a, the wiki page of a team and look mm -hmm. of what they need and then join, contact them, and start to work yeah. on the 
to do items. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I think if if the wiki page is is complete, then that's a good point. The interesting thing is how to to get the people there to make them aware of, as as um, Lucas has said, you don't have to package new stuff. Just come a team and help out, mm -hmm. and then oh five minutes left, and then as as uh, Miss Andre has said, uh, you need to be welcomed and um, inducted, mentored, whatever in the in the group and I maybe I'm wrong but I don't think that there are a lot of um, concepts in the group how to to deal with new members in a systematic way might be interesting too well, well, to your, your point uh, I think you could be more self-confident the people are sometimes a little bit grumpy and will not reward your work but uh, normally they do uh, it, it's, uh, I don't uh, say this good, but we try to, to invite people and be friendly to them. This is one point. Another point is, he also mentioned uh, uh, man uh, maintain a wiki with, which lists something which can be done by developers and by users. We divide this. But are there any um, experiences how it's possible to maintain that a wiki is really up to date? <laughs> well, it is so nice and so good to have a wiki. Somebody has an inspiring idea and puts it on a wiki, mm -hmm. and three years later, it's always there. Mm -hmm. Perhaps some other ideas, but well, are there any experiences? Mine are always quite bad. Not everyone at the same time, please. <laughs> I, I have the same experience, yeah. Okay, so that's an open task, and let's go to the last slide, which just says who does what until oh, when. <laughs> well, so what have we got that has to be done? Tim has written nice minutes. I will take a look at them and, hmm? <coughs> and send them out in... Yeah, that's my job, and I think I should that get done today. Yeah. Mm. Then we have this collection of the the tools, offline and online. Should should we have a, a deadline uh, for people sending the pointers to me? And what what would be a reasonable deadline for that? Yeah, it's a bit. Maybe three. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Did you got the, the nice um, um, stuff which um, Sledge got uh, according his request for how works uh, groups work together? So is, is there any it possibility? Private, yeah. It was private, so yeah. there's no. Okay, thank you. <coughs> okay, so I, I will also look into my my own calendar and set the deadline in, in well, <laughs> probably in September. You can just wait until you, well, just wait for emails and usually people respond to email in a timely manner. And the problem is if you set a deadline, people which will, will wait until the last ah, minute okay. to reply <laughs> to the mail. <laughs> 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 if you set no deadline, <laughs> they think it's they have to reply no. <laughs> that can happen too, yeah. Yes, Okay. Anything else that needs to be done in the near future? Organizing this <laughs> because it was really oh. great book. Well, thanks you all for, for <laughs> the great cooperation. And I really like to work in teams and also like to work in this kind of <laughs> meta team. And yeah, I hope we can continue this. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we could have, well, I won't be able to attend, but we could have an ex a meeting in Extra Madura or a meeting at uh, FOSDEM about that, maybe. We could plan something like that. Maybe FOSDEM would be better because it's... I think it's also really appropriate for the QA meeting, actually. So, mm -hmm. so another open topic for which we have no solution, actually, as far as I understand, is how to uh, list all the team we have. Yeah. So I think this is really important for various reasons. For example, if you have the list, you can automatically retrieve the list of to-do for the teams and show them in suitable places. Yeah. 
and this will diminish the probability that they get out of date. So we should really think at <coughs> how to standardize, formalize, which teams do we have, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you all.